Uh, now we're going to switch gears a little bit, have a little bit of fun. We're going to talk to Judge Lynn Toller uh, from Judge Toller's program on Fox, of course. And um, she's got a new book called Put It in Writing. Judge Toller, welcome to the Young Turks. Thank you so much. It's good to be here. Uh, great to have you. Uh, so first let me ask you, how, you know, I asked this now. We've had a lot of uh, TV judges on the show, but I'm uh, eternally curious about it. How does one become a TV judge? Uh, I did it by, I got off the bench one day and someone had a while you were out sheet, somebody called, it was 20th television, we heard you're interesting, would you like to come out to L.A.? No joke, don't know how it happened, got a phone call. Uh, so what were you doing when you got this amazing random call? I was on the, I was, I just got off the bench, I was probably sentencing somebody, you know, and I came back and I sat down and someone handed me a message from 20th television saying, you know, they would like to see you. And that was a Monday. I think I was in L.A. on a Friday. W had you covered any uh, cases that were on television nationwide or anything? No, I had one one interesting case where I had a. It was a a a, 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 a store owner who happened to be Arab, and a black kid that came in, and they got into a dispute, and then there became a big Arab black brouhaha in the street. And I was I was presiding over that case, and before I ruled, I got down off the bench, and I talked to everybody in the audience because they because you know all the blacks were on one side and all the Arabs were on the other, and everybody was angry, and I didn't leave until everybody was laughing and talking and said what they did wrong because I knew we were going to have another boo ha ha as soon as this thing was over. So there was a um, a reporter that was there. And did a piece on me that mentioned that kind of, you know, interesting straight talking judge kind of thing. But that that was years before I got the call, so I'm not really sure. That's amazing. Well, first of all, about the dispute, uh, was it that people wanted Arab money? Is that what the problem was? No, they were just, you know, they, an 11 year old boy said something rude to the clerk. I mean, it was just total humanity. And then they got race and got involved because somebody called somebody a name. I mean, it was just. There was nothing grand about it at all. All right. Now, uh, you, I'm also curious about you. You never went back and asked them, hey, what made you pick me? I did. I asked a lot of them. And what did they say? And they said, oh, we just heard about you. It's a very secretive profession, I have found. They're not big on sending memos. <laughs> so um, I asked a lot of people, well, I thought you knew so-and-so. I said, well, no, I didn't know him, and everybody had a different theory. None of them could have been correct because I didn't know any of the people that were involved in the theory that they told me. That's Judge, an awesome story. Judge Toller, um, I think I know why they picked you. It's because you're feisty and you're hot. <laughs> no, I'm serious. I mean, there are a lot of judges out there, but it's her feistiness and her hotness. Well, let me tell you something. I love the feisty, and I really love the hot because I'm 50, and I don't get hot a lot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I did. Do, well, there you go. You I left that up. But you know what I mean. I, you know, it, the older you get, the more you want to hear that. Mm -hmm. So, no, Anna's an enormous fan of your show. Yes. Uh, you and Judge Penny. I, I watch you guys religiously. Do you guys ever go out for beers, like all the judges get together and go out? Have you ever met any of the other TV judges? I was on a, on the Tyra Banks show with a couple of other TV judges. It was uh, Judge Christina, Judge Alex, Judge Brown, me, and Judge Young. Uh, I met Judge Judy because she tapes on the same lot as I do. Yeah, and did you guys interact there? Because, uh... You know, I've gone to a bunch of conventions where progressive talk show hosts are together, and I can tell you who the good guys are and who the not so good guys are. Uh, although I probably wouldn't say on air. Uh, now we're going to get a hundred emails on that. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I know technology is something, isn't it? Right. Anyway, so uh, did you all hang out at all? Did you go to dinner afterwards or no? No, not at all. We all had other places to be. And were you all cool to each other because you kind of compete a little bit? Like, hey, hey, don't no, we're on all. Me. It's kind of like a little club, you know. We enjoy, you know, we we appreciate the uh, the amount of work we do and the amount of money we get for the amount of work we do, and we don't think we're grand. Do you know what I mean? We kind no, we, we kind of get the joke, <laughs> so we're all happy about it. <laughs> That's awesome. That's a great statement. I love that. All right, so let's go on to your book. Um, it's called Put It in Writing. Now, I got to tell you. All right, first you got to tell us what's in the book, and then I, I got I got some questions. I okay, think. okay. What's in the book is 
uh, the, the, the book was the idea of Deborah Hutchison, my co-writer. And she had gotten divorced and there was, you know, a little acrimonious. And she decided to bill her ex, just make it a, a monthly thing instead of going to court and yelling and hooping and hollering. And when you took the emotion out of it, he paid it. Her idea was to make agreements for lending money when you have aging parents. And that's always been my thing is the world works. People feel and then they do. I want people to feel, understand what they feel, reposition, and then do. And that's what this book makes you do. Yeah. Now the thing is, is it really realistic though? Because I was, because I'm re look, I'm looking at it and I'm yeah. reading it and I'm thinking, really, I'm going to go up to my, you know, sister or I'm going to go up to my wife and say, all right, uh, I have an idea uh, about how we should conduct our marriage or our relationship. Uh, let's put it in writing. Is that realistic? Absolutely. I, I did it with my teenage son for the driving thing. I said under 3.0, 3.0, you lose the keys. You come up, but my promise to you is, if you're ever drunk and you're out, 3 o'clock in the morning, whatever, I'll come get you. I mean, you'll, there'll be some restrictions involved, but I won't break you in half, which I normally I would do if I found out you drove home in that condition. Uh, we have a lot of people who ask us for more agreements, especially people who have grown children returning home. Nobody makes that emotional readjustment. And you know what's happened when you've lent money to people. And so what we do in the front of the book is tell you how to approach people and ask them to do this. And sometimes it's not even about signing the agreement. Sometimes it's just about reading through it and considering everything that you need to consider before you do what you do. Like if we have an agreement for aging parents, children taking care of aging parents. Huge deal in people in my generation because all of our mothers, you know, are getting older. And usually one sibling ends up doing everything. If you sit down with the, what we give you and talk about all the things, the medicine co-pays, the trips to the doctor, the, you know, taking care of this, that, and the other thing, and parcel it out, everybody sees what everybody's doing, what everybody's not doing, and it tends to be more fair. One person doesn't have to carry the load. It, yeah, you know what I mean? Just it makes sense if you do it. I do. I, you know, I'm going to interject before Anne asks the next question. I finally figured out who you sound like. I'm trying to who do I out. sound like? You sound like a calm Wanda Sykes. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? I think that's a good thing. I, I love Wanda Sykes. Thing. But you're I a calm version. Yeah, and that's your, but you're a calm version because you're a judge instead of a comedian. It yeah. makes perfect sense. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Well, I'll take, I'll take that as a compliment. <laughs> okay, all right. Go all right, ahead, Judge Stoller, I can see your plan working when it comes to, um, you know, putting it in writing when it comes to children, right? Because you're an authoritative figure. Right. And it's, it's easy to reason with them and have them follow your rules. Right. But in a relationship where you have two equals, it's kind of difficult to sit down and say, all right, so I'm going to have you sign this contract that tells you that you're going to do this on that day and you're going to spend this much money for this week. You know what I mean? It might be a little more difficult because then you have one person trying to control another person. Oh, it's never that detailed. Mm -hmm. it, it's not about what you do on one day. It's like we, we have agreements with about uh, divorced parents and, you know, how they're going to make decisions about medical things and stuff like that. It's never what you're going to do on what day. Mm -hmm. It's the big stuff. Before I got married, we went to a marriage counselor for a couple of times to talk about what we are going to do and what we aren't going to do, how we're going to live and what we're going to deal with. I think that's why we lasted 20 years despite the rough times because you, we took the time to think it through. So Thanks. go ahead. I'm sorry. Let me ask. So my wife and I got into a little disagreement over the weekend right. because I took her to two uh, movies she objected to in a row. Okay, <laughs> uh, glorious, uh, inglorious bastards. Uh, she was not a big fan of it at all. I love the movie. And then District Nine, uh, she was eh, it, it was too gruesome for her. Right. Right. Uh, so she wanted me to say, okay, from now on, if I'm going to bring her to a movie that I think she might find objectionable, that it is my job to view the trailer ahead of time. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, and then, uh, and then see da, 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 da. And I objected to that. Now, should we have sat down and worked out an agreement in writing on that, or is that too much? That, no, that's too much. You can't live like that. <laughs> okay, all right. Because that's what I wanted to understand. Because I almost got the sense that that's what we were doing. Like every other day, we're sitting down at the dinner table. All right, let's put it in writing. You, okay. you got to talk about. And no, we're talking about in the beginning. And, and, and when you do that, I have people on divorce court, and sometimes I ask them, "Have you met?" Did you know that he didn't want to work? Did you know that? Did you sit down and talk about what your life was going to be like 
we're going to agree, we're going to live in the country, we're going to live in the city. What? I need to spend all my money to be happy. I need to ride in an Escalade. My husband's emotional relationship to money is he wants to see it, and he wants everybody else to see it. I want it in the bank. I don't want nobody to see it but me. You know, you know what I'm saying? And you've got to figure out, so when you have an extra $1,000 at the end of the month, what's reasonable to him and reasonable to me are different. If we put in an agreement about how we're going to handle money, we'll each do our own, or we each get half and half, we each have to discuss what our emotional relationship to that money is instead of me cussing him out when he comes home with the Escalade. And, and, and that's roughly worked because you knew that he had set aside X amount of money for the Escalade and you'd agreed to that ahead of time? No, I mean, we're just like, he's got his own money that he can do anything with, and I got my own money that I can do anything with, and then we've got the pot of money that I control that's, that's, that's for both of us because that's the way it works for us. Okay, I got you. Uh, Judge Lynn Toller is from uh, Divorce Court. It's uh, fascinating. You know, before we let you go uh, about Put It In Writing, uh, that's her new book, give us one more example uh, that's not related to marriage or, or, or to... And can you... Are, and the other thing I don't understand is, can you repeat these things from the book and then just... Is it like... Yeah, you can rip them out. And then, so you just rip it out of the book and then you guys write it in and then that's it like you, if you, you write it in and you can and you can do extra stuff and you can you can just go through the agreement and talk about each one of the parts so at least you've considered those things oh wow. all right that's fascinating all right next time i run into, run into one of these major issues i'm gonna rip it out of your book see what happens see what happens there you go let us know how it works out all right judge lynn toller thanks so much for joining us on the young thank really you for good. having me